Hello, welcome, Rochelle and I, thank you for joining us. The MBDA would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the team at People for Bikes and Call to Recycle, the e-bike committee, and everyone who played a valuable role in facilitating the relationship and bringing this vital program to our industry, riders and retailers at large. Today, we celebrate the industry's first industry-wide e-bike battery recycling program. And we all know that battery recycling is at the top of mind. Um, 130 million electric bicycles are expected to be sold globally between 2020 and 2023. That's a lot of batteries. And those batteries need to be safely collected and managed at their end of life. The program you're going to learn about today was developed to keep those batteries out of landfills and works to ensure that batteries are safely handled and returned to the recycling stream. Kudos to people for bikes and call to recycle. Today, you'll learn how to enroll as collection sites and begin accepting batteries from riders starting in 2022. So with that, I give you people for bikes and call to recycle. Perfect, just sharing the screen here. There we go, Ash, over to you. Great, I'll go first and then hand it over to Jeff. I am Ash Lovell. Uh, I am the Electric Bicycle Policy and Campaign Director for People for Bikes. Thank you so much for having us today. I'm so thrilled to be here with Jeff from Call to Recycle. Jeff and I have worked very closely for the last six months and I'm excited to continue working him, with him and his team for many more years. Uh, so I wanted to give just a quick overview of who People for Bikes is, why we're partnering with Call to Recycle on this um, project, and then, and then I'll hand it over to Jeff, and Jeff will do kind of a deeper dive on what exactly this program entails. So thank you, Jeff, so much. So our mission at People for Bikes is to get more people riding bicycles more often and to make bike riding better for everyone. So... Uh, we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So nationwide, we represent 285 bicycle industry supplier members, more than 1,100 ride spot retailer members, and nearly 1.4 million individuals. We know that biking is taking off like crazy. Um, one back. And we are so excited to be working with Call to Recycle on this great initiative. I'm gonna give you a little bit of stats on kind of what we're seeing for the bicycle industry and for electric bicycles. And then we'll move into why we are so thrilled to be working on this program. So the US bicycle industry contributes 88 billion annually to the US economy. And as many of you know, electric bicycles in particular are really taking off. We are not calling it a boom because we expect this to keep going for a long time. Um, as Heather mentioned, the projections are really incredible um, for electric bicycles. And with that in mind, we need to figure out what we're gonna do with all these lithium batteries. So next slide, please, Jeff. The electric bicycle battery recycling program really helps to solve multiple different problems for us um, as, as an industry, as consumers, as riders and others. First is the sustainability aspect of these lithium batteries. How can we responsibly recycle these batteries and make sure that we are having the lowest impact as we can? The second is a safety component in terms of better understanding how we can store and um, safely recycle these batteries and move them into their end of life. So this program represents the first transportation sector united under one battery recycling solution. This is a really big deal. I am thrilled to be part of the bicycle industry, which is the first of, this, of the transportation industry in the United States uh, to have an industry-wide solution for what to do with these electric bicycle batteries. This was a big effort. Uh, I was talking to Jeff earlier and he said the first time he spoke with the bicycle industry about this project was in 2019. And as we know, big projects take time. Um, we've had more than 40 bike industry leaders from 20 People for Bikes member companies that united under a sustainability task force and electric bicycle committee to help design this program. So this, is, this has been a labor of love for quite a few people, and we're super thrilled that it's gotten to the point um, where it is now. So I will say 
The industry recognized the need for an electric bicycle battery or so recycling program um, a while ago. And certain members thought, oh, okay, like let's try and do this ourselves. And what was really determined over some research and, and some data gathering was that it's actually much more economical to do this as an industry-wide initiative. So the program um, has brought together a whole bunch of different brands. Uh, Jeff will show a slide later that shows like many of the different brands that have already signed on. Um, and we're speaking to you today, the retailers, to kind of share not only why this is such a big deal, but also how you can be a part of this. So um, I'll go to the next slide and just briefly overview kind of what our um, timeline looks like. So we launched the program officially on November 3rd um, as part of the Virtual Bicycle Leadership Conference. And right now we are in the process of signing on manufacturers to the program. Um, and Jeff can go into a little bit more detail about that. Uh, and the big date, the save the date, is that in February 2022, retailers can begin signing up as collection sites. So we are not opening this to the public um, for a while. Right now, we're really making sure that we have all the right pieces in place in terms of bringing on the suppliers and the retailers so that we can roll this out to the public um, at the right time. And with that, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be a part of this, and I'm going to hand it over to Jeff. Sweet. Thanks, Ash. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, with Call to Recycle, I've been with the organization since 2012. Um, we are North America's largest battery recycling network. Uh, we operate in the United States and Canada. Every year, we recycle about 15 million pounds of batteries. We do that across a number of different industries. So e-bikes is the most uh, recent. We also do electric vehicles, uh, the power tool industry, laptops, cell phones, and then household batteries, you know, um, Energizer, Duracell branded type of uh, batteries. I'm going to talk with you about the program now, um, why it's important, how it came together, um, what is specifically will happen when, and then uh, wrap up at the end, which is a little bit more about call to recycle. Um, so, so the place to start is why, like, why are we doing this? Why is this important? Even beyond the, the notion that it's, it's right to do for the climate, which we all buy into and know is real. Um, I think the place to start here is uh, we've modeled back to 2011, how many e-bikes have been sold into the United States. And that number adds up to 2.3 million e-bikes into the marketplace. So that's roughly 2.3 million batteries. And then all of a sudden you kind of go, wow, like that's more than I thought. And where are they? And where are they going? And how are they coming out of market? I think that's the first thing that we all have to wrap our heads around. If I go to the other end of the spectrum, um, legislation, there is a critical law here that we all have to be aware of, which is called the universal waste law. And that prohibits commercial entities from throwing these types of batteries in the waste stream. So being a retailer, if we have an end of life battery, we cannot walk it down to the garbage bin and drop it in and expect it to be picked up at the curb. Um, that would be illegal. So um, there, there's a bit of a caveat here is that there's actually no laws, uh, but uh, most states don't have a law that says you have to recycle these. So can't throw them in the garbage, but I don't have to recycle them. So now I got a bit of a catch 22. What do I do about this? If I kind of frame that up as there's a lot of batteries out there, you're not allowed throwing them in the garbage. That actually forces us all to come together to find a solution. And then as Ash talked about, we started in 2019 to, um, looking at this. And so, so here we are. That's why this is important. So I'll get into um, how the program works. This is the start page, uh, five, sorry, seven steps here. I'll just guide through the steps. And, and then from there, you'll start to see how this unfolds. So at a macro level, let's start on the left. Number one, electric bicycles and their batteries are imported into the United States. Um, the majority are doing the importation. A few are still manufactured or not manufactured, but assembled in the United States. But let's just talk about the majority. This whole program is going to start with the company that does the importation. They are the one that will um, be working with an environmental recycling fee that will be paying for the recycling of the battery. So batteries come into the United States. The retailer will then sell the bike to the rider. 
Um, when the bike is purchased from their manufacturer, the environmental recycling fee may or may not be included in the price of the bike. That will have to be discussed by the manufacturer with their dealer network. Um, but the, it does start absolutely with the manufacturer um, paying a $15 environmental recycling fee to pay for the recycling of the battery once it comes out of market. The rider has now bought the bike in step two. In step three, they're using the, uh, the bike. The battery has had a really good life and over a five year period. And it gets to a point where the bike is just not pushing as far or as fast as, as they wanted. And the battery is now gonna come out of market. The rider has two options. They could bring it back to the point of purchase, which I think would be a great idea being the retail location that they, they bought it at. Um, they bring the battery to the retailer and the retailer would assess that battery for simple stuff. Is it end of life? Is it damage defective? Is it one of the batteries that we sold? That would be in step five. The second option that the rider has is they can go to our website to order a recycling kit to be shipped directly to their place of residence. They do have to take a safety training to have that happen, um, but provided they do that, they'll get a recycling kit and then the battery will be able to travel back from the residence to the recycler. That covers off step four and five. The transportation is being provided by UPS um, for the end of life batteries. Um, this is a really, really dynamic piece of the program. We call the recycle have an exemption from US Department of Transport that allows the shipper, meaning the retailers, to pack these batteries without having a hazmat certificate for the, uh, the packing of the battery. So these batteries actually are hazmat, um, hazardous waste material. Uh, because we have an exemption, you don't need a certificate to pack this. You would just um, follow our directions. You call UPS, they are all arranged to come and pick it up. You don't even have to sign the bill of lading. It's all done. And the cost of the transport comes back to call the recycle. In the case of the UPS going to the rider's house, same thing happens, all covered, all paid for, UPS shows up. For a damaged effective battery, slightly different. Uh, these batteries have to ship hazmat freight at the, for the time being, and we'll be using FedEx freight for that. And we have a web portal to um, fill out uh, very simple information and upload a couple of pictures. We will sign the bill of lading for you and the FedEx freight carrier will come to your retail location and pick up the battery. And again, you don't have to pay for anything. So that's step six. And then you get to step seven, the, the carriers take the batteries to the recyclers for, uh, for recycling and processing. That, that is how the program works. Let me tell you about why this is so good and what happens down the road here. So you're at step seven, the recycler has the batteries. They will process these back to original elements. So we're talking about lithium, lithium nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminum, copper, graphite. We get back to the original metals, all the stuff that we learned in science class years ago. That then allows them to sell it to a co another company who will then make a brand new cathode, which is the critical ingredient in a new battery. And the automotive industry is going to be buying these batteries made from used batteries by the end of this decade to go into electric vehicles. That is the closed loop system that we are all working to participate in. All right, so far so good. Rochelle, any questions so far that you see in the chat? We do actually. So um, does let's, damaged, let's do that. perfect. Does damaged or defective mean warranty replacement batteries even in cases of software shutdown? Love the question, love the question. Okay, a, <clears throat> we might actually have to help you um, uh, define that or, or answer that question based upon the situation you have, and you will have a phone number to our, our customer service team. But I can tell you up front here, not all warranty is damaged effective. Re really damaged effective are things like a major crack in the outer casing where you could actually see into the battery components. You have wires coming out. You have um, significant swelling, with, meaning that there's been a thermal event of some type in there or you are getting a software read that says this battery has been damaged um, significantly. If all you have is a warranty and, and it, there is a code read of some type, but you, in essence, you're getting a bricked battery or the manufacturer says to you, you know what, this is a warranty. That'll come back as end of life, okay? Because it is not a dangerous situation um, to be handled. 
Okay, and, and that's an awesome question. And that will be clear in the instructions that you'll get as the program um, gets rolled out. Perfect. And then it looks like we have just one more. Uh, what is the training that a consumer needs to do in order to send it on their own? Uh, perfect. Uh, it will actually be the same training that retail employees will take as well. This training, it's about 20 minutes long. It's online. It's self-generated that you follow it through little quiz at the end. The training helps you understand, number one, um, the essence of a lithium battery. Number two, how do you identify and handle a thermal runaway? That'll be the first thing that you'll see as far as when, when you get a battery back and you're holding a battery, you want to first thing is identify if God forbid there's something going bad with this thing from a heat perspective. Next is how do you identify a battery as being damaged effective? And, and we have pictures for these things and descriptions in the training. And then anything that is not damaged effective is end of life. And, and by a ratio, I'll, I'll say to you probably 98, 99, 98% of the batteries are end of life. Only one to 2% are gonna be damaged effective. And let's all hope that no one ever has to deal with a thermal uh, runaway. Um, so the rest of the training, uh, so the first part of the training is about how do you identify the differences between the batteries? Then it gets into how do you pack the battery appropriately? So we talk about end of life, here's how you pack it. We talk about damaged effective, here's how you pack it. And then um, how do you call the, the appropriate carrier? And then, then you're done. That's about 20 minutes. Um, if we stay here answering questions, we're going to be here. They're just, they're just running <laughs> in. So maybe we should go on and then okay. get to these questions at the end. Beauty. Beauty. But th those were good because they were pertinent to the steps there. Um, so let me bring some clarity as to what's accepted and not. Now we're going to get into some of the nitty gritty of the program. Accepted are lithium ion rechargeable batteries. That's the first thing that's most important. It has to be a lithium ion rechargeable battery for an e-bike. The beauty is the, the majority of these things are all lithium. I just point this out because if you happen to get um, a, a solid state lead acid battery or a sealed um, nickel metal hydride battery, maybe from a scooter, that can, can't come in the program because everything that we're working with here is lithium and it's going to lithium recyclers. Second piece of what's accepted here is class one, two, and three bicycles. So you have the, the OEM, the battery with the OEM bike that goes into market, or you have an aftermarket battery that was sold as a second or a replacement. And yes, conversion kit batteries are included. Um, they're part of this as well. What's not accepted, and I think this really helps with the clarity, is we're not taking motorcycle, ATV, or dirt bike batteries. <clears throat> we're not taking mobility motorized mobility chairs. So the, the chairs that people use to help them get around the three wheelers and four wheelers. And we're not doing mopeds. That's a big one. Okay. So no mopeds because mopeds are above class three, right? There's a kilometer or sorry, a, a mile per hour speed limit and mopeds will go faster than that. Um, and then no go-karts, no golf cart batteries in the program at this time. Okay. Right for now, we're talking about the batteries that fit into the frame of the bike or attached to the frame. Generally speaking, they're up to a thousand watt hours um, at, at this moment in time. And we're all dealing with uh, top end class three. So here's how the funding works. Um, starting on the left, there's an environmental recycling fee of $15 that the manufacturer is gonna pay to recall the recycle at the time that the bike battery or conversion kit is sold into the market. And so as, as the retailer, you're buying that from them, they will communicate with you if and how that is being um, passed on through the distribution. Um, we do not charge any um, tax on this. And th then it's up to each of the manufacturers to sort out how they're gonna apply that through their, their network. That money is held in a trust uh, with a asset management company called Rockefeller. And we uh, draw upon that to pay for the services in the program, everything in its entirety. So this is now in the middle here. Uh, we, we fund the, the building of the recycling kits, the distribution of the kits, the collection, all the transportation um, in there, the logistics that goes with it, uh, a whole series of safety material, which I'll talk with you about in a couple of slides, and then rider education and training. And then as, as far as, um, uh, yourself signing on as collection sites. There is no cost to be a collection site. There are roles and responsibilities, and I'll show that to you in a slide or two, but there is no money to pay to call a recycle from the retailer to be a collection site. 
And likewise, the rider has the ability to bring the batteries back either from their place of residence or to the store without any additional charges other than what might have been passed on at the time of the sale of the bike. So let's talk about the roles and responsibilities. Um, this one is important. It's listed here. We'll have it for you in a package that you'll get as you uh, look to sign up as a collection site. A few key points. Um, you sign on and you get a safety training. It is, it is mandatory that at least one person in your store has been safety trained. Mandatory from, from two perspectives. I, it is smart to understand the lithium batteries and how to differentiate between damaged effective end of life and how to pack them. But it is also compulsory for UPS. It's part of the agreement. They wanted to make sure that anybody who is going to be handing over a package knows what they're dealing with and knows how to pack it. The second item here is you accept the battery back from a rider. So we, we um, encourage that any brand in the program that the retailer accept the battery back from that brand, even if you don't sell that brand. This is kind of like we're all holding hands together to get the batteries out of market. All these brands are paying into the program up front and it's hard to tell where a battery might come out of market. So if you sell three brands, but you happen to get a brand from a, a one that you don't sell, a battery from a brand you don't sell, we encourage uh, you to bring it um, back for recycling, but it's not mandatory. And likewise, if you happen to get a battery back from a brand that's not in the program, it is your choice whether to accept or not. We don't encourage anything there that is strictly left up to you. If you did want to recycle it because you feel it's the right thing to do and you feel it's safe to do so, we will take it in the program without any additional charge. Um, inspecting the battery is important. You have to differentiate between damaged effective versus end of life because there's different kits that these have to try, um, travel back per US Department of Transport regulations. You place the battery in the appropriate recycling kit and then you arrange for shipment within 48 hours. Arranging for shipment is strictly calling UPS for an end of life kit. Um, there's no other paperwork. They just come and pick it up. For a, a damaged effective, it goes by FedEx Freight. That needs you to come to our website, fill out a little bit of information and upload two photos, which we verify. And then we sign off on the bill of lading and schedule a pickup for you. Um, there will be materials for you to communicate with your riders when they purchase the bike. You'll be able to share their, that this battery is recyclable at pay, place of purchase. There's some handlebar hang tags, some stickers you can place on the batteries as well. That's all part of the program. Um, educate the riders on the benefits of recycling, what happens to the batteries once they're recycled. And then you have the ability to order new materials from Call to Recycle on our web portal. You could order new kits um, to have at your store. So th this one here, let me do the safety materials and then we'll take a, a couple of questions um, as we're going. Every collection site that signs on is going to get a, um, a number of safety materials for you to use in your store. And they're listed here. The first one is a fire blanket. This blanket is, is specially designed to be draped over a battery that's starting to have a thermal event. A thermal event is a fancy word, but it's what the industry uses. It, it basically, a cell inside the battery pack is overheating. And if you let it continue to overheat, and it's hard to stop, I'll be honest, uh, but as it overheats, the next one beside it overheats and the one after that. So we got you know 30 to 40 cells in these battery packs. If this continues, you end up having the whole battery pack overheating, which leads to a fire. And so I'm differentiating between overheating versus fire. As it starts to overheat, put the blanket on top of it because um, it'll protect the battery from a flame coming out and then that flame jumping to something in the building. Now you have a second item is a flame suppression pillow. So if the battery does now catch on fire, you take this pillow, which is three inches thick and it's filled with a material called cell block and you smother the battery with it and it'll put the fire out. The third item is a thermal runaway basin, steel basin, if you happen to have a thermal runaway, it's heating up and um, you, you want it out of your building, put the battery in here and you could wheel this out of the building. Or if a flame started and you're able to get the battery into the basin, great. That'll protect your store and you wheel it outside into the parking lot. You will have heat sensitive gloves, which is, is critical if you're gonna be moving a battery overheating into the thermal basin, you'll um, don the gloves first. And then there is a, a poster, and you see a bit of an image of the poster here, 
that will be available for your service departments that explains the safety precautions and handling of a battery as you pick it up. All this is going to be provided at no additional charge to every collection site. All right, uh, Rochelle, any other questions that are pertinent at this point? Yes, we've got plenty of questions rolling in. Maybe do a so, couple right here. Perfect. Um, how does a retailer identify that the battery being returned is eligible for return? A lot of retailers do not record the battery serial numbers. Correct, correct. So you're asking the right question and it's not a simple um, answer. Some brands do put their brand name on the batteries. I, and I've looked at this myself and I, you'll see some brand names there. So that makes it really easy. Some brands don't put their name, but the transmission manufacturer name is on there. And so in the program, we have commitments from Shimano, Yamaha, Bosch, um, give you three examples there. So hypothetical situation, there is no manufacturer name, but you see the Bosch name or the Shimano name, you'll be okay to take it back in the program. And then the third scenario is there is no markings of who made this. That I would leave up to the store. Um, you're, you're a private business. You have the right to make decisions for your own safety and your staff's safety. If you look at it and you decide that, you know what, I, I'm comfortable with this. I know this person. I, you know, I, I've met them in the community, whatever. Maybe you take it back. If you have no clue where this came from, you're worried that it might have not been manufactured properly. Maybe there's some serious scratches on it. You don't know if it was handled with care. You have the right as a business to not accept it in. Great question. All right. Will mobile service businesses be able to participate in the program? Uh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So um, th this short answer is yes, and we're working on some of this. Um, you know, I have conversations going with Rad, who has a mobile service. Uh, I have yet to call VeloFix, uh, and if VeloFix is on, on this call, you will be hearing from me at, at some point. Um, we do want the mobile services to be a part of this. I think they add a whole other dimension to uh, the ability to get a battery picked up from remote areas or, or even um, in, in crowded areas and, and to get this back to a recycler. So there'll be more information by the time the program kicks off in February. Maybe we'll do um, one more here, Rochelle, and then I'll keep going. Just one more on eligibility. Is the program available in Canada? Yes, the program is available in Canada. Thank you for that question. Um, Canada got going a year ahead of the United States. Uh, there are some regulations in Canada. Six out of the 10 provinces have laws that require these type of batteries to be recycled. So we call to recycle, got the program up and running January 1st, 2021. And uh, it, is, it is active. So if your company, we, we have, I should just tell you, we have about, uh, it's about 40 companies and about 55 brands that are participating in Canada. So it's possible that one of your manufacturers is already in that in Canada. And I know that there are a few that uh, manufacturers that didn't join, but I, I do anticipate them now joining given the, the size of the US program. Yeah, that was a great question. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. We'll do more in a, in a few slides. So here's what the kits look like. Uh, there's two kits, end of life and damaged effective. The end of life is a specially designed corrugated uh, box for lack of a better word, but it is specially designed. It meets UN United Nations uh, requirements for shipping lithium ion batteries. It's also in line with US Department of Transport regulations for moving these batteries by uh, parcel service. It is, it includes prepaid shipping. Um, you will have fire retardant liner inside this uh, kit. There's instructions, there's little um, plastic bags to put each battery in. Um, it, it, it's prepaid with a label on it for UPS. You'll see that there. It has all the hazmat labels on it. Um, as long as you follow the directions in our little um, eight and a half by 11 insert, you will be fine. And the UPS driver will pick that up and um, take, take it with them. Now that kit will hold up to four batteries, 3,600 watt hours of combined power in any combination can go in there. And the only caveat from the US Department of Transport is that if there's a battery at 1200 watt hours or higher, it has to be drained to 30% or less of charge. If you can dr um, drain it based upon manufacturer approved methods of draining and don't put one manufacturer's battery into someone else's charger, 
as long as you're using batteries that match the charges and you can drain it, great. If you can't drain it, we will take that back via um, hazmat certified freight. You won't be stuck with it. We'll take it just on the freight side of the uh, shipment versus the parcel service. For damaged defective, you now have a, um, a, a pail. It's gonna be about seven and a half gallon pail that will hold one battery. And that's on purpose. If it's damaged effective, we only want come one coming out at a time. There's a material called cell block, which is fine granular glass that is poured around the battery for uh, fire containment. Um, you seal the lid, there's a clicking mechanism around the lid, so you know it's sealed. Pack it up in a, um, the shipping box that it arrived in, and then we will arrange for freight pickup uh, of that for you. This one holds one battery, uh, 1,000 watt hours is uh, the max on this. If it's more than 1,000 watt hours that you have, we have to go to a drum, and we will. We'll go to a drum and we'll ship you a drum, which I know is big. Um, but that's the way that you get to a larger watt hour, um, if there happens to be. Um, collection site training, just a little bit here, uh, Morris. We did talk, uh, there was a good question on that. I elaborated just a little bit more here. Um, minimum one employee, but there is no maximum. You could train your whole staff on this. Part of our agreement with the entire industry is we will train everybody who wants to be trained. We do track training. We know who has taken the training. We register a certificate in our software. Um, and so if you ever needed to know who on your staff did get trained at some time, we could provide that information to you. Um, it's about 20 minutes. It has to be taken at time of enrollment by at least one person. If you don't complete it, you'll get a call back or email from us uh, asking you to, to take that training. Um, and upon completion, that you get a little certificate of completion, which is kind of nice. You could print it, keep it in your shop. Um, and uh, um, first collection kits that then get shipped to you automatically. All right, so that's how you get your kit. If you follow the sequence, sign on as a collection site, email goes to you with the training, complete the training, that logs our computer then to ship you your, your um, kits. If you don't complete your training, you're not gonna get recycling kits. All right, here are the brands participating. Uh, a lot of brands are gonna participate. I shouldn't have said it that way. These are the ones that um, worked together to get the program going and have all signed on with a letter of intent. You'll recognize a lot, a lot here. And, and whether it's a, um, a brand that sells through dealers or a brand that sells direct to rider, you'll recognize a number of them on this. Um, I'm working myself, I'm working from a list uh, already of over 110 brands selling in the United States. So here we have, uh, I think the last number I counted was 42. Um, so we have a, a ways to go, which is fine. We, um, we'll, we have, um, we're, you know, we're starting this Feb 1st, we'll do as many as we can before Feb 1st, but we're not going to stop. We keep going until we get, usually uh, we try to get somewhere between 75 and 85% of the volume participating in the program. So just uh, you know, again, re-emphasizing the dates that Ash talked about, uh, we announced this program back on November 3rd. Um, the second phase that we're now in is uh, working with the OEMs to sign on the program. That's gonna continue all the way through 2022. We'll get as many as we can before the start Feb uh, 1st. On uh, Feb 1st and thereafter, the retailers can sign on as collection sites. And, and you don't have to be there on Feb 1. If you come March, April, May, September, December, that is fine. Come when it, you are ready to do this um, and, and then we'll bring you on board on the program. And then phase four is the communication with the riders. We are gonna wait to roughly September, 2022. We wanna make sure we have enough retailers on board that there's good coverage across all of the United States um, across all the states so that a rider is within a respectable amount of drive time to bring a battery to a, a local retailer. Anticipating that'll be around September and then we'll start a rider communication campaign so that they know how to uh, handle the batteries and bring them out of market. Um, we've kind of talked about all this here. I think the one thing here on this page, third bullet, um, if you could wait till Feb 1 and then go to calltorecycle.org um, if you like, and then start signing up there. If you want to get your company's name on a list so that we we're building a mailing list and making sure that we email out to you in advance, feel free to write down here, ebikeprogram at calltorecycle.org as the email address. Send us a note 
just say that you heard us on this webinar and that you'd like to be considered for uh, the program as part of a collection site once we get it going and then we'll follow up with you as we get closer to Feb 1st. And then um, just to close this out, just a little bit more about call to recycle. I, I mean, you've, you've heard how this whole thing works. Um, this is kind of what we do. Uh, we're, we're a specialist in bringing batteries out of market, a bit of a reverse logistics type of organization. We're a nonprofit. We started in 1994. Uh, we were created by six battery companies to handle their rechargeable batteries. Um, the services we provide are collection, transportation, shipping containers. So I've talked to you about two different containers here for this industry, but we, we also do unique packaging for the laptop industry. For the electric vehicle um, industry, we ship full-size crates on pallets to put electric vehicle batteries in. Um, diagnostics is sometimes offered depending on what our clients uh, require. We could have um, services to diagnose batteries for what ails them. Um, sometimes, particularly in the electric vehicle industry, repurposing is a, a key component. We're working with a couple of repurposers by sending them electric vehicle batteries. I do anticipate for this industry, e-bikes, once the volume of collections goes up, we will onboard a company that might choose to repurpose e-bike batteries into um, alternative energy storage units. So, so I see that as a good opportunity. We coordinate the recycling across all of the United States. There's about six or seven recyclers in the United States and another three that are active in Canada. So uh, we work with most of them. We do some advisory services and then employee training, which you've heard about for this one. And then we're also the distributor for cell block, which is the fire retardant material that we use in, in our programs. And that, uh, that I think brings us to the end. Yeah, so I'm gonna stop sharing and then let's answer some more questions. Perfect. What else do we got, Rochelle? We have, just to clarify, moving forward, any Bosch Shimano or Yamaha battery will be retroactively included. A customer brings in a Bosch battery from two years ago. We ship them for free to call to recycle. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. That's how good this program is. We, we have modeled the complete 2.3 million batteries that are already in, to, in market over the last 10 years. And that it works in the financial model and we will take them. And then we'll, as we go forward, we'll start collecting money on the new ones being sold in. And the, it just kind of all balances out over the next six years. All right. Can batteries from kick scooters be recycled through this program? I, so can, yes, as long as they're lithium, would I recommend it? I, I, think, I think you got to make your own choice here. We're not collecting money from the scooter industry. Okay, so every scooter battery that we collect is going to be funded from the bike side of things. So it's not that I, I want to advocate that one industry pays for another and yeah, let's go do it. However, if you have a scenario with a client who you really like and has bought two bikes from you and they happen to walk in with a scooter battery and you want to do the right thing, pick it up and, uh, and ship it back. Just remember to check it for safety and make sure that you know what you're bringing into the program. It has to be lithium, can't be any other chemistry. Uh, batteries that have experienced a thermal event, once cooled from the metal barrel, can its carcass be recycled? Yes, and we ask you to let it cool for seven days. Okay. I realize that's going to be tricky. I know it's going to be tricky. This is, this is a bit of the complicated area that you're getting into. Okay, At the end of the day, your local fire marshal has the say on how batteries are handled at your store. Okay, regardless of what call to recycle tells you or any other advisor that you hear, your local fire marshal has the final say. So it's probably a good idea once you are ready to do this is to speak with your fire marshal to make sure that everything is clear. We do suggest holding it for seven days because you got to make sure the battery is cooled. Sometimes lithium batteries will appear done with the fire, but two days later they reignite. Now, if you happen to have one, that had a thermal event, you put it into our damaged effective kit, it's probably your single best storage containment device because of the cell block material that we include with it. If God forbid it reignites, the cell block will put that fire out. These are great questions. More of this stuff on the fire and the safety is gonna be in the kit that you get at the time of sign up. Uh, if a dealer sends a battery that's not from a participating manufacturer, is there a charge to the dealer? No, no charge to the dealer. Let's 
see. You've mentioned a few brands specifically. Many brands use the retention battery case with Panasonic cells. Do any of those work for the program regardless of the bike brand using the batteries? So I'm very familiar with Panasonic and it's a great battery. And it, yes, Panasonic's can be recycled. I don't know the name retention, um, but it, you know that's something for me to chase down and, and get them into the, into the program. The, the most important thing to check as you get a battery back, one, is it lithium? Two, um, is, is it safe? And, and you got to inspect it, whether they hold it, the rider holds it or you hold it, you got to look for abuse and, and if it's damage defective. And you have the option of turning it away if you think there's going to be a, a risk brought into your store. How does Culture Cycle keep track of what employee in a location has taken the training? For example, if that employee leaves, are we on the on the honor system to train another employee? Uh, so yes, we, we track it in our software. Uh, we know each individual, their name and their email address who went through the training. We even know if they started the training and they didn't finish it because it, it tells us if they did, if they when they get to the last page. Um, and um, but yes, if your employee leaves you, um, let's say, hypothetically say you only have one employee that you were trained and that employee leaves you, it is on the honor system to get someone else to, to take the training so that uh, you have someone who knows how to do it. I, I just recommend, you know, have at least three people so that every shift someone is there who knows how to pack these up. And if you needed to find out who was trained, you would just call us at, at the 1-800 number that'll be available. And we'll, we'll be able to go into the computer and tell you, you know, these four employees are trained. What happens to the recycled batteries once returned and are consumers offered a credit toward a new battery if their old battery is recycled through this program? So the batteries, once they're returned, they, they go to recycling at the, recy the battery uh, recycling processor. They will, uh, at, at this time, given where the industry is, they will be recycled back to original metals and then sold into the market for manufacturer of just a variety of new products in North America. Eventually, by the end of the decade, those materials will be used to make new batteries for the automotive industry. Um, and then when you return a battery, no, there's no credit um, coming to you uh, for, for it. Uh, every time a battery is sold into the market, the manufacturer of the bike is going to remit $15 to call the recycle, which pays for its recycling, but there's no credit coming back at the time it uh, comes out of market. Um, there are multiple questions here so about the same thing, so I'll just kind of consolidate. Um, is there a cost for dealers to sign up? First of all, is there any scenario where a retailer would be charged for anything in the program? For example, dealers who have multiple locations, so they need multiple safety kits. Okay, it's, good. it's a, good, a very smart question. And, and here's how I would um, answer that. Let's start with the money first, okay? So the manufacturer is going to pay call to recycle. They will decide if and how that will be built into the price of the bike or on, the, on an invoice. It, it is up to each manufacturer. That information you have to get from the brand that you represent. Um, and if you do get charged in the price of the bike or as a, a line item, you do have the ability to pass it on to the rider. Okay, so 15 bucks in, in the in one scenario, if everybody passed it on, the rider pays an extra $15 when they buy the bike, whether it's a $1,000 bike or a $5,000 bike, it's an extra $15. Um, sorry, there was two parts of that question and I, I answered one part. What was the other one, Rochelle? Um... Dealers who have multiple locations, so they'll need multiple safety kits. Would that right. be an extra cost? No extra cost. No. Uh, every collection site. So, so a, a collection site is a single location, regardless if it's in a chain of you know five stores or fifty stores. So every site will get all the safety materials and, and all the recycling kits. So a retailer with multiple locations would just need to sign up each location. Each location gets signed up. And on our site, how we'll take that in, and, it, and it's going to be explained on our site, is um, let, let's, well, I'll use my own name, okay? So Jeff's Bikes. And, and I happen to be talking with you from Toronto. So my store here would be called Jeff, Jeff's Bikes Toronto. And then if I had a store in Denver, Colorado, it would be called Jeff's Bikes Denver. And we're just going to ask you to 
allocate a name to the location to each one of your stores that will keep it in our computer system as a unique location and then that location puts their own address in and they get all the safety material all right uh is this program preferable to what we're already doing um this retailer says they drop off a nearby all-purpose battery business for proper disposal Hey, if you're if you're disposing of it properly today, like kudos to you, seriously, it, it's awesome. Uh, the thing that I would encourage you: make sure you're on the right side of the law as far as moving these around. As a commercial entity, anyone who drives that battery from your store to another location for drop off has to be certified to handle hazardous materials, right? And and you need to know that, and you need to have it in the right type of container as you move it. And as long as you're doing that and it works, great, keep going. All right, how will you obtain co consumer names when that phase kicks in? How do you plan to weed out batteries originating from outside participating brands? Example, all these cheap direct to consumer products not fully tracked. Yeah, so we, we don't have a list of riders. And, and that communication, um, and this is where People for Bikes is going to come in and, and play a huge, huge role in particular, is reaching out to the riders through public uh, media, if you will. So, of course, social media and then traditional advertising and um, other publications like Outside. It, it, outside has been fantastic with the announcement. And their industry site, uh, uh, Bicycle Retailers, talked about this, as has Outside Magazine talked about this recycling program. These are ways that will reach re riders to explain what to do with the battery. The retailer can play a role too. Uh, you'll have handlebar hang tags that explain the battery is recyclable that you could hang on the handlebars. You'll have stickers to place on the batteries that say, bring the battery back for recycling. Um, you'll be able to educate them with uh, just you know the conversation uh, about returning it. That's how we'll start to reach the riders. As far as brands that aren't participating, the ones that you could buy online and get uh, an extra battery shipped that actually is where some of the hazard is coming in this industry and where you're starting to get some of the fires because people are charging a new battery in a charger that doesn't match and and whenever you have mixed match charging you're opening yourself to to risk this is where uh, our belief based upon the conversations we're having we'll have about 75 percent of the unit volume in the program participating, meaning maybe 25% won't, <clears throat> it'll be up to the retailer to accept the battery back or not. If you think there's a risk and it, you don't know the brand, um, you could ask that rider to go to our website and we will send a recycling kit directly to the residents to pick it up, regardless of who and how who made that battery and how safe or not safe. If it's at the residence, they get it in our kit, we will be able to bring it back out of market. Can I hop in there too really quick? Just a little bit yeah. more on People for Bikes and the outreach to riders. Uh, we, as Jeff said, we have already gone really big on the announcement and we will continue to go big on talking about this program moving forward, uh, specifically moving more toward the general public and ridership um, as we get later into 2022. Uh, one big piece of this is our RideSpot app. Uh, so we will have riders able to actually track like from the minute they buy their bike when they become carbon neutral based on how many rides they're doing and also when it's time for them to consider starting to recycle their battery. So this is, you know, we have multiple different kind of channels that we'll be working on um, getting this message out to consumers, obviously working really closely with retailers to get you all of the um, resources, educational and marketing that you will need um, to share this program. Uh, and also working through um, social media and the RideSpot app as well. Hey, Ash just touched on something that I totally forgot. Thanks for mentioning your RideShare app. Um, Call to Recycle's website has a drop-off locator. Um, and, and this is a, it's a function that's already up and running. You can actually go to our website and look up and you'll be able to see Home Depot stores or Lowe's stores as an example. We will, every collection site for the e-bike industry will be placed on this drop-off locator. Um, there's a filter button, so you could filter only on e-bikes and, and cuts out the noise of, you know, a Walmart or a Home Depot. And you'll be focused solely on bike retailers who are taking back e-bike batteries. 
And then a rider is going to be able to look at all the locations, which one's close, and then make contact with you. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ash. All right. Um, here's a question on best practices. Um, this person says, should batteries be viewed as hot potatoes, quote unquote, in terms of safety, as in shipping them out as soon as you can individually, or can you kind of stockpile them as they come in to, to batch ship? Good, good. I, when I talk, I actually talk about batteries as a natural resource, which is, is different. And the reason for that is that you, you actually can get back to the original metals so you don't actually have to mine more for these things. You could actually take a used battery, get back to the original metal and turn it into something good. So I look at it as a natural resource. The government has it classified as a hazardous material, which is fine. And we need that for our safety, which brings us to the heart of the question here is, would you stockpile these? No, I would never, ever, ever stockpile these. We ask that you, you get one, get it out within 48 hours. Um, the reason for that is it like literally 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be fine. The, the thing with lithium is it burns and it burns really, really hot. And you, you really can't put it out until it burns itself out. And on that fraction of, a, of an instance where one location has a battery that's going to overheat, um, it, it just starts to burn. And, and if you have a stockpile of these, like say you got 30 of them and this battery is one of the 30, eventually all of them are going to catch fire. Um, so you're better off um, having them removed from your store within 48 hours after they come in. Will a dialogue be opened with Walmart and their online sales of their sourced e-bikes and batteries? Yes, and it's already started. That, that uh, reach out to them has already started, as has REI. REI is the most furthest um, dialogue we have going right now. Um, it's a beautiful conversation and I, I won't say anything at this point because some of the, these are um, private or com confidential type of talk, but let me just say that REI has been fantastic to work with so far. Um, I have a call coming up with Best Buy as well. And then the other ones that we will reach out to are Dick's Sporting Goods, Costco, Amazon. Those are the big retailers that I think need to participate in the program. That's great. Um, uh, we currently have a battery that needs to be recycled. What would you yeah. recommend we do right now? Um, get get a hold of me um, if you want. Make it easy. So actually, my, I have a crazy last name. So let let me go back and share. Can I share my screen again? I just want to go back and pull up this. Uh, yeah, here it is. Search. I'm just pulling back up the email address. Did that not go? No. Jeff, Search. we can drop it in the chat too. Can, yeah, maybe. Sure. Hang on a second here. Realizing this is. Okay, I found my presentation. So the email address is ebikeprogram at calledarecycle.org. E B I K E P R O G R A M at call number two recycle.org. Send an email there. Just say you were listening to Jeff talking and that you have a battery right now for re recycling. Maybe type in the type of battery, the watt hours. It's just end of life, it's damaged. Hey, give, give us a little bit about that battery, where you're located, and then uh, we'll contact you and we'll make some arrangements. All right, there are a few questions about the cost of the program and how the $15, um, that number was reached. Um, people are saying that they're concerned about that not covering the cost of it and the remaining cost reaching the dealer somehow. Can you address that? Yes, I can address that because the people who are thinking about that are smart. The actual cost to run this on a single battery is anywhere from 50 to $65 to bring it out of market for all the materials, the couriers going out back, um, the, the safety stuff and the recycling. So how do we make this happen? Um, the $15 is put on uh, or paid for every bike that goes in the market. And we estimate 75% of the bikes going in the market 
will have paid 15 bucks into this pool of money. So 75% of the volume has 15 bucks in it. Coming out of market, uh, we're gonna probably be starting off with roughly 15%, 20% of the batteries coming out of market in the early years. So we will be taking a lot of money in with a little bit less money going out because there's a difference between 75% of the volume versus 15 coming back. That money builds up in a pool of funds that we draw upon. We've mapped this and we showed people for bikes and in these 20 companies that we're working with that over a six year period, your pool of funds goes up, peaks in year three and starts to come down. And then once you get to year six, you're sitting on about one to two years worth of money to pay for recycling. The fact that we collect more money than we pay out on the total program allows us to bring the price down for recycling from 55 to 65 down to 15. And that is why it is better that everybody holds hands and does this all together. Otherwise, if you wanted to run this on your own, you absolutely will be paying 50 to 65 bucks per battery for end of life. And you'll be paying as much as 300, 400 on a damaged defective because it has to ship hazmat freight. So we all hold hands here. We trust each other. We know there's going to be a few companies that are free riding because not everyone will sign up and we'll do our darndest to find them, but inevitably not everyone. And we all just have to be a little bit mature about that and accept it as part of how this thing will, will activate. And this will then be the most cost-effective way to get the batteries out of market. Yes. So just building on Jeff's, this is why People for Bikes as the Industry Trade Association uh, was really excited about working with Calder Recycle uh, in order to make this really an economical and uh, environmental and safety focused kind of initiative, really able to check off all these pieces. We did have specific industry members look at doing this themselves and the cost was prohibitive. So really excited to have an industry-wide um, initiative with Calder Recycle. Uh, and going off of that, everyone needs to be involved. Somebody asked, um, is LEVA, the Light Electric Vehicle Association, participating at all? I heard the question. Um, I, Ash, I've, I don't think I've spoken to LEVA. I've talked to so many people, folks, I'm sorry. I, I'm just trying to remember. I don't actually think I've spoken to them, but Ash, have you guys? Not that I know of, not yet. Okay, so let's, Ash, you and I have a follow-up to do. <laughs> okay, so let me just write that down. It's, it's, say the name of the association. Uh, Light Electric Vehicle Association, LEVA. Okay, I wrote that down. Ash, you and I will be making a phone call. Thank you for whoever put that question through. All right, it looks like we just have one more and that's perfect on the timing here. Uh, we're coming up to the hour. So um, the question is, did you model on just the number of bikes imported in or did you include replacement batteries? Does a manufacturer pay based on bicycle versus actual number of batteries? Yes, so um, yes, yes, and the yes is the answer. Uh, they, they pay based upon the batteries going into the market when they report to us. So whether it's on a bike or aftermarket secondary conversion kit, um, it's all reported. We did model for replacement batteries. So, so this is how our modeling worked. And I apologize if your sales are different than what I'm gonna say. Um, we, we modeled that 2% of riders who buy a bike will also buy a second battery at the time they bought the bike. And then we modeled that when batteries come out of market after five years, 50% of the people will buy another battery to go back on the same bike. And 50% of them will not buy another battery. And, and I've shared that data with some of the, a number of the manufacturers just to test it. And truthfully, whether it's been Bosch who's looked at this, Shimano, uh, Track Specialized, Giant, like no one has had a better idea on how to split those numbers. Um, so that's what we've put in. All right, I believe that was the Great. last question. I don't see any awesome. more. Is there anything else that we didn't cover that you thought of? I, this, I love this group. They, they, you guys have some amazing questions. Um, yeah, no, I, th I, think we did, I think we did really well. And, and as 
we get closer to the date, we're going to have a package of information that we'll be emailing out to the, the, the retailers. Um, you'll be able to get all of that through us, through your dealers, through NBDA. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff and Ash. And, and as Jeff said, we will continue to keep retailers informed and uh, look forward to doing more webinars with people for bikes. And thank everyone for your attendance today. The questions were fantastic. And Rochelle, you did a great job moderating. So thanks, everyone. Thank you all.